What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new power station. This is the Bluetti Elite 200 V2. Taking a look at some of the specs, this has a 2073.6 watt hour LiPo4 battery, a 2600 watt power handling, a 1000 watt solar charging input, UPS function, and a very good five year warranty. So taking a look at the power station itself, just like the rest of Bluetti's power station, this is definitely a solid and very well-made power station. But one of the best things about this model is this is one of, if not the smallest 2000 watt hour power station so far. I don't know if you can see it on camera, it's probably hard to see, but this is basically the same size as most other one kilowatt power stations, except this one has double the capacity at two kilowatts inside this power station. I even have some other Blue Eddy power stations that are around this two kilowatt capacity. And this is by far much, much smaller. I'm not sure how they did it, but I'm guessing similar to a Samsung or Apple phone. They really, really compress everything in there to get the smallest size possible. Another great feature about this power station, and this is even better than the compact size, is this has a EV grade LiPo4 battery. And it's also the first ever CNAS certified battery in the industry. With this certification, the battery is rated to maintain a 80% capacity after 6,000 plus cycles. This is a 100% increase compared to previous Blue Eddy models and even closer to 150 to 200% more compared to other power stations out there. Assuming you use this power station every single day, that means the battery will last a total of 17 years. And then if you're someone like me who doesn't use the power station every single day, this should give you 20 plus years out of the power stations. So definitely a very long lasting battery. And in my opinion, that alone makes this one of the best power stations to come out so far in 2024. All right, so taking a look at your ports, right up here you have your DC slash PV input, and this can take a max of 1000 watts. You have your DC output, and this can put out 12 volts or 10 amps. Right here in the middle, you have two USB A ports, and these can put out 15 watts. And then here at the side, you have two USB C ports, and both of these can put out 100 watts. Especially in power stations of this size, usually they'll put out 60 watts and 30 watts or maybe they'll have a 100 watt and 60 watt, but definitely much better to see it like this when it has two full 100 watt ports. And right over here, you have your four AC output ports, and these can put out a total of 2,600 watts. You don't have any ports on the left side, but here on the right side, you have a grounding terminal, your AC input, and then you have your circuit protector switch. So when it comes to charging, you have three different ways you can charge this power station. First off, you have your AC input. And when you enable their turbo boost option, this can charge at a very fast 1800 watts, which is one of the fastest charging speeds for a power station of this size. And this is gonna let you charge the power station from zero to 80% in only 1.1 hours. Again, this is a 2073.6 watt hour power station. So that is definitely a very impressive charging speed, especially for that capacity. Up next, you can also charge this with up to 1000 watts of solar charging. Again, very impressive that they were able to fit that good of a controller inside a power station that's this compact. And last but not least, you can also charge this from your car cigarette adapter if you have the adapter that plugs into this port here. All right, so I drained this power station from 100% to zero with a 1700 watt load, and it put out a total of 1,972 watt hours. Doing the math that gives this unit a usable capacity of 95.1%. Most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average. So this is definitely much, much better than most other units out there. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the inverter on this. As I said earlier, this is rated to put out 2,600 watts. I'm not gonna test this with basic electronics or laptops or cell phones or anything like that, as that's gonna be a complete walk in the park for this power station. You can probably hook up every piece of technology you have in your house to this power station, and you're still gonna have at least 1,000 watts or more left over. When it comes to your regular household outlet, a 15 amp outlet is rated to put out about 1,800 watts at the most. This does 2,600 watts. So with this, you're gonna be able to plug in any item that can plug into your regular household outlet. 
whether this be your microwave, your toaster, your hair dryer, electric heater, air conditioner, like I said, anything that can plug into your house is gonna run on this power station. And at most that one item is gonna run 1800 watts. So even if you plug in something that uses a full 15 amp outlets power, you're still gonna have a good 800 watts beyond that to run on this power station. All right, so right now I'm in my shed outside. This is a solar shed. I have solar panels on the roof and right here I have an outlet and this allows me to switch the cable to be powered from the grid or from solar power. Typically I have it powered off a Bluetti AC300. You can see it here on top, but then I also have two batteries down here. I got another battery on the way. This is gonna be run by about six kilowatts, which is more than enough for this shed and to run a air conditioner or heater for a long time as well. But right now I went ahead and switched this over to the very small Elite 200. And right now this is running my entire shed. So before I show you the wattage that is pulling, let me go ahead and show you everything that's on there. Regular household items do not pull that much. So this thing can handle it no problem. So right now on the power station, it is running this router, a Google Home device. This is the larger 10 inch screen as well. I got a USB-C charger plugged in and this is charging a power bank at about 52 watts. This is running my ceiling can lights. I have a total of eight of these on the ceiling. It is running this ceiling fan here, which has five bulbs. The can lights and these bulbs are also Wi-Fi bulbs, which adds a little more power. It's also powering the ceiling fan up here. It's powering this fan that I have here. And last but not least, right over here, I have a power strip. And on this, I have my MacBook Pro charging. And all of those devices to empower this entire shed right now is only pulling 328 watts. So that's pretty small. This is gonna be comparable to running your house lights, your router, your Google Home in your house. Maybe with a full-size house, if you have more lights, a little more fans going on, you might pull about five, 600 watts at the most which is very easily gonna be a walk in the park for this power station. Again, it can run a total of 2,600 watts. So let me go ahead and hook up an electric heater and we'll see how far we can push it and if it can actually run that 2,600 watts. All right, so as you can see, it's still powering my entire shed. Let me go ahead and turn on this heater. So let me put it on low mode, see how much that pulls first. So on low, it looks like it's pulling about 1700 watts, but that's at its peak wattage. So it's probably gonna drop down to about 14, 1500 watts. So my entire shed and the heater pulling about 1100 watts. Moved it up to medium. Now running about 1500 watts. Push it up to high. So it looks like with the heater and the shed, everything in here running together is pulling about 1600 watts. Let me go ahead and grab the other heater and see how high we can bump this up to. All right, so I went and got a second identical heater. This should put us at the limit, if not over it. So with just one and the entire shed, we're pulling about 1600 watts. Let me turn this on, set it to low. As you can see, pulling about 2600 watts now, 2650. This puts out a max of 2600. So it looks like it's settling about 22, 2300. Go ahead and set that to medium. All right, so unfortunately the shed plus two heaters was too much as that's well over 3000 watts and that's too much for this power station. So let me go ahead and try the two heaters by itself without the shed into the mix. And hopefully we can get a power to hover around that 2600 limit. All right, so with one heater alone on high, it looks like it settled around 1380 watts. Let's go ahead and add the other one. Set that one on low. As you can see with peak power, pulling a little over 2,700 watts and it didn't shut off, so that's good to see. All right, so it stopped about 2,070. Let's see if we can bump it up to medium, get it around that 2,600 watt limit, hopefully. And there we have it, pulling 2,680 watts. Falling a little bit under that now, 2,530. So it can definitely run its 2600 watt limit. Let's see if it can run a little bit over that and how long it can do it. Let me bump this heater up to high. Hopefully it doesn't trip it. Now running both heaters on high. We are at a little over 2600 watts now. And it looks like it's staying there right about 2670 watts. So we're 70 watts over the limit. All right, so it's been a little over five minutes. And as you can see, it's still running both heaters no problem at all. 
and it's pulling a little over 2600 watts about 2670 watts so definitely doing what it's advertised to do in reality these two heaters are supposed to be drawing somewhere around 2900 to 3000 watts but this power station actually has another impressive feature and that's their power lifting mode which lets it run a 3900 watt load when it comes to resistive items which is the highest of any power station of this size how this works is if you have items like a heater, air conditioner, electric cooking device, hair dryer, instead of running it at its full wattage, it'll deliver a lower wattage that the power station can handle. Yes, you're going to get a little more output from that device, but in the end, you're going to be able to run more items all at once. If you had a power station that didn't have this, it wouldn't do that. It would just shut off and you have to unplug things. So definitely a lot more convenient to have that feature. And as you can see this entire time, it is still running that 2600 watt load almost 2700 watts so definitely impressive especially for a power station that is this small one thing i just realized is this is a very quiet power station i don't know how well it'll come across on video but even though i was running that heavy load on this power station it was still very very silent yes the fan was on but compared to most other power stations it might as well have been off because i could barely hear it with other power stations, once you're running them at their maximum limit, usually they'll start blaring very loud and I could barely record near them because it's just an overbearing loud noise. But this remained very, very quiet. Even with the charging, still barely noise at all. So again, very, very impressive that they're able to keep this that quiet. Usually power stations are larger because they want to leave some space for thermals and things like that. But despite being compressed into a tiny package, Somehow they also managed to keep it very quiet as well. All right, so taking a look at the app, this is both a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi app. So if you're inside your house, at the store, or anywhere across the world, you can connect to the power station using Wi-Fi. And with that, you can see all of this information or mess with the toggles. Or if you're out somewhere and you don't have any Wi-Fi connection and you're in front of the power station, that's when you can use Bluetooth instead. So for me, I mostly use Wi-Fi as this is very convenient to have. I can plug something into the power station and have it charging, or I can have the power station charging from the wall, go into my house, and right here from the app, I can see everything going on and see when the power station is done charging. So taking a look at the app itself, I have gone over this many other times with other Blue Eddy power stations, and overall, this is definitely one of the better apps out there when it comes to power station apps. So right here in the middle, you have your total battery charge. Up here, you have your input wattages, one from your PV or solar, one if you're charging from the grid. Right down here, you have your outputs. You have one for DC, one for AC. And then if you click on the battery here in the middle, you can see more data about your battery. Click on that, it'll show you everything about the battery. And then you also have sections for alarm or error code. So if something is wrong with the battery, go ahead and see that there as well. Coming down here, you have your toggles to turn off and on AC or DC. You have your energy data here. So if you have this running on solar and you plug in the numbers for your electric company, how much they charge you, it'll tell you how much money you saved. As you can see, I've only charged this from the grid, so I haven't saved any money. But if I click on that, it'll also show you a full breakdown of everything that happened with the power station and charging as well. And then down here, it also has some more data with your PV generation and CO2 reduction. Diving into settings, you have your network settings up top, shared device, uh, default connection mode. You can set by default if you wanted to connect by Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You have your Bluetooth connection password, so someone can't just pass by and connect to your power station. Very rare that's going to happen, but good to have that password just in case. You have your working mode. As I said earlier, this does have a built-in UPS, and you have standard UPS, PV priority, time control, and customized UPS. So going into customize, this is what it looks like few different things you can set on here. So you can go ahead and adjust that to your liking. Right below that, you have charging mode. You have standard, silent, and turbo. You have your power lifting mode, as I displayed and explained about earlier. You have your eco mode, and this is both for AC eco and DC eco. When you turn that on, it has a few more settings. So you can set this to shut off anywhere from one hour to four hours. And then you can also set this from anywhere from 10 to 40 watts. Same with the DC. You got the shutdown time. And the wattage this one goes from 5 to 20 watts you have your auto sleep mode this can be programmed from 30 seconds one minute five minutes or never you have your upgrade advanced settings if you know about solar and these kind of things go ahead and mess with that but if you don't know too much i would just recommend just leaving that as it is 
And that's pretty much it for the device. As I said earlier, a very simple but well laid out app. And when it comes to power stations, definitely one of my favorite apps out there. So I know a lot of people get nervous when it comes to storing large batteries like this in their house, but rest assured you don't have anything to worry about as this does have an advanced BMS. This continuously monitors and protects the power station from over voltage, short circuits, temperatures, and many other things as well. Besides this, you also get a very good five year warranty to keep you covered in case you do have any problems. Overall, this is definitely a great power station. It performs well, it's extremely compact, and best of all, it's also very affordable. So overall, if you happen to be shopping for a mid to large capacity power station, I would highly, highly recommend this one here, which again is the Bluetti Elite 200 V2. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.